Welcome to this second trig video on part one of equations. We'll go straight into our third example. You'll see here that these are co-ratios, so this is an example of type three. Here you will note that the first step requires you to convert to the same ratios before you can proceed. Once you've got them in the same ratios, it will then become a type two equation. Pause the video now to give question three a go. So let's have a look at the solution together. Our first step is to use co-ratios to convert. So cos of 2x is just sine of 90 minus 2x. Because the term is negative to start, this will stay negative. Now we have sine of this angle equals negative sine of that angle. And so sine is negative in the third and fourth quad. The reference angle is 90 minus 2x and we've been asked to find the general solution. In the case of the third quad solution, we have the equation x plus 30 equals 180 plus the reference angle plus n360. Remember where we have to indicate that n is an integer because the solution occurs every 360 degrees. And simplifying this equation brings us to the first of the general solutions for x, which equals 80 plus n120. And our fourth quad solution is x plus 30 equaling 360 minus the reference angle and also plus n360 in an element of z. And this simplified gives us the other general solution for x of 120 plus n360. These two equations represent all the possible solutions of x for the above equation. Our question 4 is an example of a type 4 equation. The next step here, once you've identified the type of equation, is to look to factorize or apply the trig formal identities. You will then land up with possibly two different equations, where again you will have to see what type they are so that you know how to tackle them. Pause here to give this question a go now. So there is a lot going on here. Let's take a look at it together one thing at a time. First of all, it is definitely a type four equation because of the combination of ratios and more than two terms. And so we look to see if there are any trig identities we can apply in order to factorize. If we replace cos squared with one minus sine squared, then we have an expression in sine on the left-hand side, which when simplified is a trinomial. Imagine 6a squared plus 5a minus 1, where a is sine x. This then factorizes to 6 sine x minus 1, sine x plus 1. Our new equations come from knowing that either one or the other of these brackets must be 0 for the product to be 0. From the first, we therefore get that sine of x is 1 over 6. Are you able to identify which type of equation this is? And from the other bracket, we get that sine of x is minus one. It is useful to use your graphs for ratios equaling zero or one or minus one. From the sketch of sine, it is clear that sine of 270 is minus one and that this occurs every 360 degrees. And from sine of x equaling one over six, this is a type one equation. A ratio equaling a value. And so the first step here is to calculate the reference angle, then decide which quad sine is positive in, and then you are ready to create your equations. This is the first quad solution, and here is the second quad solution. We've included a fifth question here to illustrate what to look for when deciding between a type 3 and type 4 equation. First of all, we can see straight away that this isn't an example of type 1, as the right-hand side cannot be a numerical value, nor an example of type 2, as the ratios are different. So then, the question is, is it type 3 or type 4? Even though these are co-ratios, the important thing to notice is that their angles are the same. And when the angles are the same, then it's a type 4 equation where you have to apply trig identities first before being able to solve. In this example, there is also a coefficient of 5, which doesn't allow for type 3 to be applied, but the coefficient could have been 1. 
So you've really got to be on the lookout for when the angles are the same. Pause here to give this question a go on your own first before going through it together. So it is the tan identity that we need to apply and so to apply it we need to divide through by cos x. This then becomes tan x equals 5 which is just a type 1 example. The next two steps are to find the reference angle and to find in which quads tan is positive. We need to use the general solution to make sure we find all the possible solutions for x because of the interval required. The general solution for tan is slightly different to sine and cos in that both sets of solutions, the first quad solutions and the third quad solutions, can be captured in one equation as they are equally spaced, as is illustrated here. Once we have this equation, then we can find the solutions for x that fit the interval required. The required interval for solutions for x in this question is between minus 180 and 180 and so 78,69 is a valid solution. Then if we make n1 and therefore add 180 we get 258,69 degrees which lies outside the required interval and so is not a valid solution. If we then make n minus 1 and therefore subtract 180, we get negative 101,31 degrees, and this does lie in the interval. We can then take n to be minus 2, but this solution again falls outside the interval required. And so these are the solutions for x for the above equation. For more practice on these trig equations, please refer to our Grade 12 Maths 2 in 1 study guide. Thank you for watching these two videos. There is one more video on trig equations where we include compound and double angles. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series your key to exam success.